let's chat a little bit about New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC, and let's do a preview for them. Let's start with a little bit of an overview. Let's talk about how they navigated their offseason a bit. They're going to be led this year by new head coach Juan Carlos Amoros. It's his first year with the club. Uh, they hired him out of Houston. Uh, he was the interim head coach for the Dash uh, sort of around June, uh, but got hired but didn't really join the team until really that second half stretch of the season. And the team had a really impressive run uh, under his tenure there, nine games undefeated out of the 12 games. And you know what? Gotham F, uh, Gotham needed uh, a coach of their own, and they mm -hmm. said to take a look at this uh, head coaching position. They also had an interim at the time, so no more uh, humanities, and they, they ended up uh, settling in on uh, Juan Carlos Amaro. So they also continued to go ahead and flesh out um, – you know, the, the technical staff as well, because they also had to bid farewell to some assistants um, on the coaching staff. So they've got uh, Jen Lalor, uh, Sean Harris, uh, Akalakani, and uh, they previously had ties to Amaros. They were with him while at Tottenham. So, you know, right. you're going to coach in and they want to bring in some folks that have, you know, they're familiar with it if they worked with before. Um, so curious to see where this coaching staff is going to take Gotham because it can only be up, right? From here, question mark? I don't know because they finished in last place in 2022. Four, one, and seventeen, their overall record, Lisa. Oh God. It was it was really rough last year. Gotham broke some records and then not the records you want to break. They had a 12 game losing streak, a five game scoreless streak. Um, it was tough for them. I, I'm going to say on and off the pitch with coaching changes happening and, and understanding. I mean, after Scott Parkinson left in the middle of the season last year, essentially, and Hugh Menzies came in, Hugh Menzies did try to change some things up. I mean, former Jamaican uh, women's national team coach definitely had a lot of good experience, but it was always a temporary position for Menzies and for the players. And I think that's a really difficult position to put a team in at that point in the season when you know that this coach isn't going to be here next year. So it's, it, it, it's, you have a hard time digging and finding that motivation inside yourself as a player. I think that's something that got them struggled with last year, as well as like a slew of a million other issues yeah. that they went through. It was, uh, it was really tough. It was tough to watch. I know we got a lot of fans um, that joined us live on YouTube and listened to these episodes that were, were going to Gotham games at Red Bull Arena, and we'd try to talk about it here, and it was like, it's just – they can't string any passes together. It was rough. I mean, finishing last in the league, they can only go up from here. That, that's why I, maybe I posed the question too early. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um it's uh, it was it was tough to watch, tough to cover at times. But I think something good that really really came out of that was a lot of the player perspective as well. They never really seemed too low or, or too out of it in terms of their their morale and, right. and what we heard coming out of post games or, or things like that. So we were really curious how this franchise was going to navigate their off season. You know, who were they going to retain? You know, from that very, very long 2022 season, um, who were they going to go out and get? How were they going to, um, you know, operate within the draft when that came up? Because heading into the offseason, Houston had, or excuse me, uh, North Carolina, or oh my God, Jesus, Gotham. let's try this again. <laughs> Gotham FC had the number one pick going into the draft. Uh, and we were like, how, who are they going to take? That's a, that is a, a very valuable selection. So they did some things in the draft. They did some things in the offseason. They did some things during the free agency period. They really kicked things off in the first ever free agency period. So we gave them an offseason grade of an A. So not an A+. Plus. Only one team got that. We gave that to Kansas City. But we gave Gotham an A. So let's talk a little bit about how they navigated the offseason. They made some they made some additions. Uh, they got some, some important pieces, I think, uh, for this team. Mm -hmm. In 2023, probably the biggest of those is the addition of Lynn Williams in a trade with Kansas City Current. This was one of a billion trades that Gotham participated in um, on draft week, let's just say, because the, some of um, some of the moves that they made before draft day kind of set them up to put the wheels in motion to acquire a Lynn Williams to essentially still make us make selections in the first 
round. Um, like that they went out and got a Lynn Williams on a big draft day trade. Like that they went out and got a Yasmeen Ryan in the draft week trade. I like that they made a little bit of noise in free agency uh, with Kelly O'Hara. Uh, and not only Kelly O'Hara, but making sure that they went out and targeted some areas of need. Um, there were some question marks around the goalkeeping position and how that was going to look. They went out and they got Abby Smith. I really like that pickup as well. And I really like that they made some re-signings out of free agency with somebody like a Taylor Smith or somebody like an Ifioma Anamanu. When we're looking at some of these kind of breakout or off-season moves, what are some of the ones that stand out for you? Or what are even some of the ones that are kind of under the radar for you, Lisa? I think the big one is, I mean, it starts with the coach, right? It starts at the head. Juan Carlos Amaros. I was really impressed with uh, JCA and what he did at Houston last year, coming into that team and, and turning their season around. Um, and Houston was a team last year that had three different coaches throughout the year as well, right? James Clarkson, Sarah Loudon stepped in as the interim and then Juan Carlos Amaros and Juan Carlos Amaros led Houston to their first ever playoff run um, ever in club history. And I think that getting him at a team like Gotham is going to be really good, um, really beneficial for them. They, they had Scott Parkinson and acquired Parkinson in the offseason last year. And everyone thought that was going to be really good. And I don't think it was bad. I just don't think it was a good mix between club players and coach because I think Scott Parkinson is still a very good coach. And I think the players that are on this team um, were good last year. Like, they weren't bad. It was just kind of like a bad mix in the pot. So fresh start on, on all fronts, and I think that's where it starts. But, I mean, when you look at this offseason and everything that Gotham did – that's why they got an A because of every move that they made and they did it with style to remember the announcement of Kelly O'Hara, the free agent <laughs> signing with yeah. them. It was the first free agent to make a move and, and to announce um, that O'Hara would be signing with a new club and leaving Washington spirit. And they did it in such style, which is like the Gotham signature, right? They, they've got the red carpet, they've got the flashiness. Um, and I think they did it really tastefully this year with all of the other signings, because then they go and they trade to a top draft pick for a Lynn Williams. And I think that's a great trade-off because a team like Gotham, they can't be getting top draft picks. I don't think like getting three or four top draft picks and expecting to have a turnaround season. You have to get players that have already done it, that are ready in go mode immediately can score goals for you can play against tough competition can bring that professionalism. And that's someone like a Lynn Williams. Like I, I think for Gotham, you take a Lynn Williams over someone like Michelle Cooper. Now the long run might be better in, in getting a Michelle Cooper, who was the number two draft pick overall that went to Kansas City and which was traded for Lynn Williams. But I think Cooper is going to do better at Kansas City. And I think Williams is going to do better at Gotham based on the environment. So I think it's a win-win-win in, in that situation for Cooper, for Gotham, and for Kansas City. Um, I also think getting someone like a Yasmeen Ryan on this Gotham roster is huge. This is another player that's ready to go. Uh, Yasmin Ryan is a player for Portland that struggled in 2021, getting minutes, getting consistency, really getting time on the pitch. And then as 2022 came along, Ryan really kicked it into another gear and said that she was going to be useful and, and made herself indispensable to Portland. And by the end of the year, she's starting consecutive games. She's um, starting the final for Portland and winning a championship with them. And then also you get an Abby Smith from Portland. So two championship players on this Gotham team. I, I think they're in the exact right direction uh, of Gotham to turn this team around. This is what you have to do. You have to acquire big players, players that know how to win, that are ready to come in and work. And and not to mention, I mean, this is a New Jersey, New York, Gotham team. Like the location attracts players. I'm going to be really honest about that. Like if you want to play in a big city, you want to go to New York. Like that it's not like you're going to the middle of nowhere. Um so I think that helps in a sense as well to some of these players. But I also think like because you are a New York team, you have to be good and you have to be able to win in order to compete with the New York work. Like yeah, sports I'm scene. I, I hear where you're going, but I'm going to pause it because I'm not going to have the Jersey slander. There will be no Jersey, uh, you know, 
like just glossing over that. It's New Jersey, New York, Gotham FC. Yeah, whatever. You said whatever. They're coming here for New York. I know they play in New Jersey too. But like as this Pennsylvanian, whatever (laughs) about New Jersey, I'm going to be honest. You should actually be more, you should be like way more pro Jersey because don't no. most like Jersey folk like go to Philly? Isn't like their downtown Philadelphia? Yeah, people that are sometimes from like Cherry Hill area, which is like right over the river from Philadelphia, say they're from Philadelphia and like they're not. You live in a different state. I love Jersey because I go to the beaches there, but like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> come, Dirty come, Jersey. Come to New York where you can enjoy the beautiful <laughs> beaches of New Jersey. That's Lisa's, Lisa Roman's pitch to players who want to potentially uh come to <laughs> come to oh country. god this is so funny i did not wake up this morning and think i'd be we're talking uh, about new jersey <laughs> well look we're look listen we are a social studies show now we're talking about <laughs> we're talking about locations and, and cities and things like that uh listen i'm with you 100 percent. i think that you have to have a certain pitch when you're trying to go out and land players whether it's in free agency or even trying to re-sign them whether it's somebody like lynn williams or if it's someone you know like a kelly o'hara um even if it's somebody like an abby smith even if it's not something where it's like geographical location but what are you pitching players on in terms of what you're building and if you're coming off of a last place finish that's got to be a really really good pitch you've got to put something together to say hey we're doing things here come with us but i mean i feel like Maybe last year can be one of those moments where it was just a bit of a, of a, you know, hitting a reset button, I think, for this team. This is a, a club that went through a rebrand, you know, formerly Sky Blue, wanting to try to get out of, you know, previous narrative around the club that it was not a place where you wanted to go play as a professional. Um, I think the rebrand has helped that a little bit. The fact that they went to the playoffs in 2021 helped that a little bit. But now they had a 2022 that was a more than I think disappointing. I mean, this was a team that wanted to build on that 2021 and they just didn't. And not only did they not build on that, I mean, to finish in last place, I think is really, really disappointing. Um, So cool to see that they went out, made some big signings, that they made some important re-signings. Um, Huge. That they navigated, they had a very active draft day, you know, whether it was making the, the multi-team trade um, before draft day um, and then still shifting their pieces around to, to walk away with the top uh, first round pick, right? So uh, selecting Jenna Neischwanger out of FSU at number four, uh, you know, and then still getting someone like a, a Ileana Hawking out of Arizona State. You know, these are young players that maybe they can get in there and try to see who can make an impact. Um, but I mean, when, with the gains, there are some losses. And, and when you're looking at Gotham's offseason, it's maybe not – so much uh, as it is players, but in terms of uh, just looking at things as a whole, it's coaches and it's players, so it's mm-hmm. staff and players. So they had the retirement of, of Ashton Harris, um, and that was an immediate need that they needed to go ahead and try to address, and they did that by, I think, getting somebody like in Abby Smith. Um, but they also lost uh, some technical staff, so no Bevianez, no Becky Tweed with uh, with Gotham FC anymore, Uh Bevianez, now the assistant with Racing Louisville, Becky Tweed, an assistant over at Angel City. Um, and when we saw some of uh, some of some early off-season moves for this New Jersey, New York side, um, we saw a lot of staples um, of this team actually bid farewell. Gotham literally was like, hey, thank you for your service we're going to be moving different directions. And that included players like a dummy Richardson that included players like a Nicole Baxter, um, somebody like a Jennifer Cujo. Uh, so players who had been with this team through years when it was perceived as a sort of undesirable, mm-hmm. right? And so now um, moving forward into different, different directions here and trying to get, not only get back to the playoffs, but, but make a big run, 